Hi, I'm Andrew. In today's lesson, I would like to teach you how to use a graph to find the zeros and the multiplicity of each of the, well, zeros, I guess, of the function, okay? So what do they mean by zeros? Well, they just mean x-intercept, okay? Those are basically the zeros of the function. So when you look at this graph, you want to highlight the places where the function crosses or just touches, all right, that x-axis. And we'll write them down, right? So we'll have x being equal to negative 4 was one of them. x being equal to negative 2 was another. And x being equal to then 3 was the last one, all right? Now, those are going to be the zeros, these values right here. Now what we have to do is we have to give the multiplicity of each. Okay, multiplicity kind of means the power of the factor that would arise uh, and give, or I should say give rise to those uh, zeros or those x-intercepts. If you understand why uh, the patterns that I'm going to talk about occur, please take a look at the link in the description below. I explain in detail why certain multiplicities give certain behaviors, okay? But now here, all we got to do now is take a look at, this, at the uh, x-intercept, and I want to identify the local behavior. In other words, what's happening around this x-intercept? Is the graph crossing it, all right, or is the graph bouncing? If the graph crosses, it's odd. It's an odd multiplicity. So if you notice, it crosses it there. It also crosses it here, okay? But it doesn't cross that x-axis there, right? It kind of does a little bump a ski a little bump and turn, okay? Whenever it does a little bump a ski that's known as an even multiplicity, okay? Now the question is, you might say, okay, odds great, even's great, but, you know, Andrew, there's a lot of odd numbers out there. There's a lot of even numbers also. How do you know which is which? Well... If the graph here just basically comes down and it doesn't snake at all, it's basically the lowest odd number then. It would be a 1. Why is that the case? That just, it's a good question. Uh, but that has to deal with just the, the nature of the math in the function. Okay? And you can start plugging in numbers and kind of see that happen. Remember, the graph here, you know, the graph here is just a visual representation of any x value put in and its corresponding y value. All right? So all of it kind of goes back to, well, what's the actual function then? All right, it's all dependent on that. So here, though, both of these cross, they don't kind of snake, and therefore to have a multiplicity of 1. So each of these zeros would have a multiplicity of 1. And then for the even one, if it kind of does just a little quick bump, right, that would be the lowest even number, which would be 2. If it kind of flattened out a little bit, that might be then 4. But it's very hard to differentiate 4 from 6, from 8, and etc. All right, so usually you'll probably just be given 2, you know, a uh, multiplicity of 2 there. So the uh, 0 at x equals 3 has a multiplicity of 2. And that's all there is to it. All right, so again, check out the link in the description below. Um, I explain why these behaviors occur, odd and even, okay, multiplicities. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more, check out our channel. Because we not only have math, but we have physics and chemistry as well. And I would love to help you out with more stuff. Take care.